So the Nintendo DS is one of my favorite systems of all time and arguably my favorite handheld of all time. In the mid 2000s, I honestly played my Nintendo DS more than any other system I owned, even the modern ones, just because I loved what developers were able to do with the hardware. As time has gone on, we of course have gotten the Nintendo 3DS and now the Nintendo Switch, but I really feel like a lot of people don't realize how many awesome games there are for the DS that are still worth playing today. So that's what we're going to talk about in today's video, a bunch of games I recommend revisiting in 2021 and beyond for the DS that I think are awesome and still relevant today. Now one thing before we get into the video, I didn't include any RPGs because honestly I feel like that could be, well, a separate list of its own. So if you like videos like this, slap that like button and subscribe to the channel. If this video does well, I'll do more like this in the future. But now let's get into our list of Nintendo DS games worth playing in 2021 and beyond. The Ninja Gaiden franchise used to be one of the most popular in gaming, but one of the best Ninja Gaiden games is hidden away on the Nintendo DS with Ninja Gaiden Dragon Sword, or Ninja Gaiden DS as we'll call it in this video. More than likely, due to the lack of raw power on the Nintendo DS, you probably think that Ninja Gaiden on the system would be a 2D affair, but you couldn't be more wrong. If anything, visually speaking, Ninja Gaiden DS is stunning with 3D character models, fluid animation, and a rock solid 60 frames per second performance. Yes, a 60 frame per second action game on the Nintendo DS, it does exist. Ninja Gaiden DS is also unique in how you play the game, with instead of using the face buttons in a D-pad like a traditional game, you hold the Nintendo DS sideways like a book and use the touchscreen to control Ryu. The left side of the screen is your map, and the right side is how you control Ryu, which can be switched if you are left-handed. You tap the screen to throw a projectile, tap and hold to make Ryu go somewhere on the screen, you slash vertically or horizontally to attack with your sword, and slide up to make Ryu jump. It sounds a little bit confusing at first, but after a few minutes it honestly becomes second nature. Now Ninja Gaiden DS isn't a super long game or anything like that, taking around 7 or so hours to complete, but it is a fantastic action game that no one ever talks about anymore and is well worth playing in 2021. The Legend of Zelda franchise saw two releases on the Nintendo DS with The Legend of Zelda Phantom Hourglass and The Legend of Zelda Spirit Tracks. Both games play in a pretty similar style, with control of Link being done with the touchscreen, which turned a lot of people off to these games, and a bit more emphasis on puzzles because of this unique control scheme. But I think both of these games are fun and worth checking out. But I want to give a little bit more shine to Spirit Tracks, because it seems like it's become the butt of jokes for Zelda fans, and I still think it's a really good game. Now, Spirit Tracks uses a visual style similar to Phantom Hourglass and, to some extent, Wind Waker, using a cell shaded style that I still think looks very nice and vibrant on the Nintendo DS. Obviously, in a traditional Zelda style, you visit dungeons, fight bosses, fight enemies, but Spirit Tracks makes things interesting by having a train traverse throughout the land. You have to map out your route, be wary of other trains on your route, look out for animals on the tracks, and eventually you get some firepower to defend yourself while you're on the train. What makes Spirit Tracks very unique from other Zelda games is the fact that there are multiple endings in this game as well, and it impacts how the whole end of story ends up playing out. If you can get used to the controls and don't really mind a heavy emphasis on puzzle solving, I think The Legend of Zelda Spirit Tracks is a solid game that can be a lot, a lot of fun. Now this might surprise you unless you're an old time viewer of the channel because I've actually mentioned this before, but Metroid Prime Hunters is actually my most played video game of all time. The online portion of this game consumed literally hundreds and thousands of hours of mine and my buddy's life, including breaking multiple Nintendo DSR triggers and running out of my apartment and down the street to disconnect from Wi-Fi because it wouldn't count as a loss because hackers started to infiltrate the game online. Now, although the online multiplayer is of course no longer available, Metroid Prime Hunters is still a Metroid Prime game worth playing, especially because, well, you probably didn't play it originally. Metroid Prime Hunters has you playing as Samus in a game that takes place between Metroid Prime 1 and Metroid Prime 2. Various bounty hunters that are featured in the story and multiplayer mode are basically trying to claim powerful relics, and Samus must stop them and collect them herself. The game utilizes a first person engine and honestly, it looks way better than it has any right to. Sure, I mean it's dated by current standards, but considering the hardware it's running on, this game looks absolutely insane. The control scheme has you move with the D-pad and aim with the touchscreen, which can take a little while to get used to. 
and it can actually cause some hand cramps during prolonged sessions because many times my hands look like this. Metroid Prime Hunters definitely has a bit more emphasis on action and shooting more so than other Metroid Prime games, but there's still plenty of puzzles to enjoy within the game. It's not a perfect game, and it's kind of annoying how the game recycles boss battles, but honestly, it's one of the most technologically advanced Nintendo DS games, and is still very enjoyable today. And if you got some friends with the DS, you can actually do the local multiplayer with just one game card as well, so, I mean, that's pretty cool. Now, if you guys watch my news videos, you know that sometimes at the end of them, I tend to talk about the NBA during the NBA season because, I mean, I'm a basketball fan, what more can I say? I expected the Nintendo DS to get a gimped NBA Live or 2K game on it, but it never happened, even though Madden did appear on the system. Thankfully though, there is an enjoyable basketball game on the platform, and it just happens to star Mario and his friends, and it's still a really awesome game. Mario Hoops 3 on 3 features Mario and friends playing well, basketball. Now since this is a Mario game, it plays a lot like an arcade style game, and actually uses the Nintendo DS in a very interesting way. To control the game, you move with the D-pad, but you dribble with the touchscreen. To perform shots, dunks, and other things, you do certain gestures on the touchscreen with the stylus. Defense is similar, with steals and blocks being done with the touchscreen as well. There are question marks on the court that allow you to get more coins, and this will impact how much your shot or your dunk is actually worth. It's a fun to play game, and there's actually some really cool Final Fantasy crossover in this game, as it was designed by Square Enix. There's a ton of characters to unlock, and visually speaking, I think the game still looks great, with excellent use of colors and very crisp textures. I think that the fact that it wasn't a sim style game and instead was an arcade style game makes the game have greater longevity, and is definitely a game still worth checking out. Hotel Dusk Room 215 is arguably the most underrated video game of all time, and the fact that this is a point and click adventure that I absolutely love is just a testament to how good this game is. You play as an ex-detective named Kyle Hyde, who is now a salesman for a company called Red Crown. He goes to a hotel named Hotel Dusk in search of his former detective partner, and encounters a female walking alongside of the road while driving to the hotel who ends up visiting the hotel. Once Hyde arrives at the hotel, he is given a room number 215 which can allegedly grant wishes and thus begins this mystery thriller. Now much like Ninja Gaiden and Dragon Sword, this is a game that has you holding the Nintendo DS like a book, with one side of the screen being a map of the hotel and the area you are in, and one side being how you control Kyle. Movement is done either with the touchscreen or the D-pad, and the game has you searching various areas, solving puzzles by using the touchscreen, or questioning other people at the hotel. The game uses an interesting hand-drawn, almost comic art style to it, and I think it looks absolutely great, and the writing is just out of this world. Ask the wrong questions or give the wrong answers to a question and people will talk to you less, and you can even get escorted out of the hotel at some points of the game, resulting in a game over. The story has a lot of great twists and turns and does a really good job of keeping the mystery alive right up until the very end of the game. It's definitely a slower paced game for sure, but if you love great writing and just great storytelling, Hotel Dusk Room 215 is a great game to play even to this day. Imagine a game in which you play made up retro games, trying to beat challenges set by a game master, all while essentially living in the 1980s when it comes to game information. That's what Retro Game Treasure is, and it's a game that, well, completely flopped in North America and is the reason why we never got any of the sequels here. Basically, this game offers a few different Famicom-inspired titles in which you have to try and beat challenges set by someone named the Game Master. Each game has its own full instruction booklet with details about the game, and there's even fictional video game magazines that you can read that will offer hints and tips and cheat codes for the games and previews of the upcoming games you're going to play. Now the Famicom inspired games themselves aren't really anything special, ranging from a Galaga clone to a racing game and even an RPG, but they are still fun games and just the whole vibe of retro game challenge is absolutely amazing. Like I said, a second game came out on the Nintendo DS and a third one came out on the 3DS, but both of these games are very Japanese heavy in text, so the first game is the only real way we can play any of this franchise. But it's a fantastic game, the retro style is amazingly done, and it's definitely a DS game worth playing in the modern era. And like I said, because you bastards did not buy this game, we never got the sequel. I'm, I'm still mad about this, I, I'm still mad about it. Our final game is the game that actually inspired me to make this list because it really still blows my mind that this actually released on the Nintendo DS and how good it ended up coming out. 
Grand Theft Auto is, of course, one of the biggest franchises in gaming, and Grand Theft Auto Chinatown Wars was an exclusive, at least when it released originally, for the Nintendo DS, offering a brand new Grand Theft Auto experience. Now, obviously, this game couldn't run an engine similar to GTA 3, and instead it looks a bit more like the older GTA games with a top-down style, but I don't think that takes away from this game at all. The map you have is a huge area. The mission variety is insanely good. The game runs smooth throughout the entire experience, and everything in it is just top-notch. While the game doesn't have full music tracks like other GTA games, it does still feature various radio stations, featuring beats by hip-hop producer Alchemist and electronic artist Deadmau5. Also, you buy and sell drugs in this game, like literally, with an interactive drug market, and you can actually put kilos of coke in the trunk of your car, in a DS game. Now yes, this game did also release on the PSP with upgraded visuals and music, but it loses the touchscreen controls that are used for things like carjacking, planting bombs, and of course the aforementioned drug deals. I've honestly been playing this game a lot recently, and I'm absolutely in love with it, and you can make a case for this game being one of the most impressive games on the Nintendo DS in terms of size, scope, scale, and quality. Grand Theft Auto Chinatown Wars is definitely a game worth revisiting in 2021, and you probably never played it when it originally came out, so dust off that DS or 3DS, pop in a GTA Chinatown Wars cartridge, and thank me later. Alright, so those are a handful of games for the Nintendo DS that I still think are worth revisiting in 2021, or maybe worth visiting for the first time if you didn't have a Nintendo DS during its heyday. Now obviously the DS had a ton of games released on it, so let me know in the comments section down below what games you would add to the list, and maybe I'll do a follow up list, and maybe I'll do that RPG list as well. And as always guys, thank you for checking out this video. If you are new to the channel, make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications, check out other videos on the channel as well, and as always, I'll catch you guys on the next one. Later.